Saki says, are you keeping it ultra healthy? It feels like I haven't done a video talking in depth about video games for quite a while. All this Hong Kong 97 and pickups talk can be fun for a little while, but I don't want to get too distracted from the primary objective of this channel, which is to introduce great, obscure games to the public. And so, today I've put together a little list of the top five retro games with sudden, jarring difficulty spikes. Now just because a game has a sudden jump in difficulty doesn't automatically make it a bad game, but it's probably going to affect the fun factor somewhat. And if you're in the market to buy that game, you'd probably want to know beforehand. So today we're going to start off with Undead Line for the Sega Mega Drive. No, wait a second. This game doesn't have any difficulty spike. It's just outrageously hard right from the first 10 seconds of the game. Wrong video. Okay, I'm done screwing around now. Let's get into it. Coming in at five is Shinobi 3 for the Sega Genesis or Mega Drive. Shinobi 3, called Super Shinobi 2 in Japan, is the third and final Shinobi game for the Mega Drive. Most players will notice the game is way more forgiving than the notoriously hard Revenge of Shinobi, and you'll probably be able to get to level 4 or further on your first try. It's a quality game in every aspect, superb music and graphics, and reliable control. However, when you arrive at the last level, you'll wonder if you're not playing a different game. It requires you to do wall jumps over pits, avoid laser traps, and contain some quick moving platforms that require both memorization and very precise skills. Doesn't ruin the game by any means, but the difficulty grows as a sign curve, and that big jump all takes place in the last level. Number 4 is Tailspin for the NES, a Japanese developed game that was only released in North America and Europe. It's basically a side view shooter, although you start out only being able to shoot one bullet at a time, so it doesn't feel quite like a shooter. You get money and buy power-ups as the game progresses, and once you figure out where things are and what to buy first, it's pretty easy. Everything that is except for the boss of the fifth level. It's a kind of tank-like contraption that shoots bouncing bullets at you while a steel ball drops from above. The safe space you have is extremely cramped, and you'll discover for the first time in the game just how unforgiving the hit detection is. If you finally manage to beat it, you'll probably beat the game in the same sitting, as everything after the boss is just as easy as everything before it was. Next up is Pulse Man for the Sega Mega Drive, a Japan-only platformer that was actually Game Freak's first game, who we all now know and love for developing the Pokemon games. It's become super expensive, probably for being a later release for the system with low numbers and a Japan exclusive. The game starts out with six levels which you can take on in the order you choose. You can charge up with electricity and bounce around the screen, and once you get the momentum down, you'll find that the levels are sufficiently long, but pretty easy and lacking any really deep level design with thoughtfully placed enemies and jumps. That all changes once you beat the first six levels and unlock the final seventh level. It's probably as long as three of the standard levels combined, and just suddenly expects you to do super tight jumps and other feats of skill. It just comes out of nowhere and goes on and on. Basically, you'll spend the first 45 minutes mindlessly going through the first six levels, and then desperately try to get through the last one before you lose all the lives you had saved up. The difference in difficulty is almost unforgivable. Now we're getting in deep. Number two is the PC Engine or TurboGrafx CD version of Valis 3. I love the Valis games from the bottom of my heart, but their appeal is more in the presentation and atmosphere than the actual gameplay in most cases. Valis 3 is relatively easy. You have a long life meter, there are plenty of power-ups along the way, and boss patterns aren't particularly complex. Then you get to level 4. The first time I ever saw this level, I just thought the game was broken or something. There are jumps that neither of your characters can do, period. After the advent of the internet and YouTube, I finally discovered that Chan has an ice spell that has to be used in order to freeze enemies to use as platforms. So I figured, now I know what to do, should be no problem. Not so fast. It's not just once that you have to freeze an enemy to jump across a pit. This has to be done many times. 
All the while, flying birds of death assault you from above, and other bad guys shoot at you with arrows. You're standing over death pits the whole time, and this game launches you backwards if you take damage. Given the jump control and hit detection, it's extraordinarily hard, and even when you manage to get through it, the boss isn't exactly easy. This is a game that lets you save your progress so you can come back to the level you left off on. And even so, it took me over a week to beat this one level. And once it's over, the rest of the game is a breeze. I don't comprehend how the developers could have playtested this even once and thought it was ready to be shipped. This is a truly legendary difficulty spike in gaming history. But there is one game whose difficulty jumps so badly, so unfairly, that it will make you lose faith in humanity if you ever had any to begin with. That game is Eldis for the PC Engine CD. Eldis is one of the least expensive shooters for the PC Engine. While things like Spriggan and Lords of Thunder go for a 60 or 70, Eldis can be had for a whopping 10 bucks. It was developed by Masaya, famous for games like Target Earth, Shibibin Man, and the Choaniki series. Their shooters were generally pretty good. Wings of War and Grey Lancer on the Mega Drive are both superb. So what happened here? Well, it's a cartoony themed side view shooter with option like power up characters that add to your firepower in a variety of ways. Level, mini boss, boss. Sounds simple, right? First of all, like the Darius games, if you die once, you lose all your power ups. Speed, shot, helpers, they're all gone. The helpers do respawn right there when you die, but their effectiveness is limited. The biggest problem is losing all your speed power-ups halfway through the game. Items come very infrequently, and the game plays like it expects you to be powered up all the way. Still, even a tiny bit of memorization should safely carry you through the fifth level. But most people shouldn't even bother, because if you get to level 6, you will be greeted by the most heartless, asshole-ish, bullshit hard level I have ever seen. Squeezing through passageways while lasers fly at you, airtight moving blocks to navigate, and I can't even count how many mini-bosses there are. Did I mention this is a one-hit death game? One hit and your weapon and speed return to zero. There are no weapon power-ups in this level. And if by some godforsaken miracle you get to the boss, you can only hit him once every couple of minutes. The tail stays off screen most of the time, and it's the only part that takes damage. Whoever developed this game is a goddamn asshole. I refuse to believe anyone played this before it shipped. Level 6 in Eldis makes level 4 in Valis 3 seem perfectly reasonable. It is truly the most legendary spike in difficulty gaming has ever seen. If any of you follow me on Twitter or Instagram, you may have noticed that I recently beat Eldis. Real hardware, no emulation, no save states. I traded a piece of my soul in for that accomplishment. Good children should by no means copy it. That caps off this list. Thanks a lot for sticking with me to the end. If you enjoyed the video, do please subscribe. There's lots more retro gaming fun coming up. And also check me out on social media. You can see me beating games on real hardware. Might be the motivation that you need. Links are down in the description. Thanks a lot, guys. See you next time.